is to not take a look at these sweeps for now. We're going to come down here to where we see our head and headphones and turn the visibility of that on for a moment. And you'll see how these are kind of interacting slightly in a strange way. It's going through the head, not really what we want. So I want to get this into a position where we really like the way that it looks. So um, we can start to kind of move this over to the side and things like that. But before I move it, I have a very valuable thing going on and that is that this head is still aligned to that world axis. So if I come in here and we go out of our camera view for a moment and we're just kind of looking at this very objectively, if the sweeps are all turned off, so if I come in here and click that till that top one's red and then we just, whoops, just click that and paint them down. So I'm turning off all the sweeps, but not the head. You can see how that is still that original little X, Y, Z controls and it's in the right place. So that is a very valuable thing for us because we're gonna be able to draw some things that we wouldn't be able to do quite as easily. So what am I talking about? What do I wanna do? I want the splines that we've created with the sweeps to also kind of mirror this image of the head. So eventually, we don't even need the head itself. We just have splines kind of outlining the contours of the different parts of her face and head. So because this is in that original position in the world, um, we have a unique opportunity to be able to draw those. So if I middle click here, we go into a four panel view and you can see that indeed, this is a front view, and this is kind of a perfect uh, side view here. So let's start drawing out some of these splines with this head before we ever even move the head into place. So I'm gonna start with this right view because we got this really great view of the profile. So what I wanna do is come in here, and I'm gonna be using Cubic because I just have found that the Bezier doesn't work as well for what we're about to do, and Cubic's just really easy, actually. So I'm going to start um, at the top here and just kind of like right on the top of her head. And the way cubic works is if you just have two points, it looks pretty uh, not curved actually at all. But then when you start adding more, it starts kind of curving around. So you got this really easy to work with little kind of curved system. And I'm just gonna move all the way down her neck here, just like that. And it looks like maybe I could work a little bit on the curve of her nose. So I can just kind of start to pull those points around. And I don't even need to use like Bezier handles or anything. I can just change the position of the point. And that's gonna change the interpolation of the curve, which is really, really valuable and easy to work with for this kind of a thing. You can see some areas maybe not close enough to the head, so we want to get in there a little bit more tightly to make this more accurate. And moving points down, not just from side to side, can also help the accuracy of that spline. Okay, so overall that looks pretty good. Let's keep going. I'm going to draw one down the back of her head too. So. Again, just kind of starting at the top and just kind of moving along those contours. And this time I'm being, uh, I'm moving a little bit more quickly because as you saw, it's really easy to go in there and just quickly kind of move those points up, down, side to side, and you've got a lot closer match than if you were trying to edit with the handles um, for a bezier kind of shape. So just kind of quickly fixing that, moving that around. Great, okay, so now we've got basically our profile and the back of our head. So we've got that silhouette. But what happens if we're looking at her from a slightly different angle, maybe like this right here? 
So if we want that kind of an angle, um, we would probably have to actually rotate the head. So before we get to that point, I also want to get these that are kind of directly from side to side on her head. And we've got that really easily accessible view here from the front. So let's come in here and I'm going to open up that head and headphones and we'll turn off the headphones visibility for a moment. So we're only looking at the head. Okay. So let's grab our uh, cubic tool again. And we'll just kind of come in here again, and this time work from the side. And one thing that's really great about what we're doing right now is that we are going to be able to actually just draw one side, and then we can just duplicate it and pull it on the other because her head is symmetrical in this plane. See, from side to side, from the front to back, not so much. Um, obviously, she's a human, so that's not really how we work. But this is going to be a lot easier. Now, the m closer you want it to match, um, once we start playing with around with her jawline and things like that, the more points you want to have. So if you find that you didn't maybe put in quite as many points as me, you can add them by selecting your spline, right clicking and choosing create point. And then you can just add a point in somewhere along that area. So let's say maybe I want to create another point on her right around here. I'll just right click with just the spline selected, no individual points and choose create point and then I can make another point right there. And then I'll just come back in here and we will grab our cubic tool again if we want to draw any more. But really, I don't really need to draw anything else since we're going to duplicate. So now we really can't move on with our drawing until we get this into place. Now, if your head had been say let's you know, moved way over here, our lines would actually have originated at that world XYZ point or kind of closer to it. So now our lines are actually already on her head and we don't really have to worry about moving them over, getting them into place, which is really, really valuable. So what I'm going to do is we'll go into model mode for a second, grab that spline tube that's the side of her head and then control drag that down and then I'll grab my rotation tool and we'll rotate this around 180 degrees and bam that's on the other side of her head and we didn't even have to really draw it so that's really really helpful and easy now once this kind of gets pulled over a little bit to the side we're going to get that really nice view that we get of um, kind of this side of her head here but I also want to get some views of this part of her head, kind of this profile here. So I need to rotate this head mesh that we've got. But I don't want the splines to be left behind. So what I'm going to do is se shift select all of those and then we'll bring them down and place them in the hierarchy beneath the head. So every time that we rotate the head now, those lines are going to move with it, which is what we want to do. Okay, you also could just move it under the head and headphones because we want the headphones to rotate with it also. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we'll come in here to our, let's go into, I think it'll probably work best in this right view. And you can select either head or headphones or the head, you just want to look at the coordinates and make sure that both of them are zeroed out so we can get back to where we were. Um, probably will be actually easier to do the head since those splines are underneath there. So what I'm doing is I'm rotating this kind of on the quarter so she's looking away. So it's kind of an optical illusion because she could either be looking towards us kind of over here or she's looking and her nose is on the other side and she's looking over there. But what's important is that we see the line of her profile and that's what we want to draw and capture here. So we'll come back into our cubic and if you need to zoom in a little bit you can do that and then I'm just going to draw along this edge again but now we're following a slightly different kind of three-quarter view of her face and what this is going to help us do is to get this really beautiful curve on her jawline okay so can move this kind of back down here and let's go ahead and try placing this spline 
under the head hierarchy. And then let's select our head and zero that heading rotation back out. Now we've got this really interesting line kind of on the three quarter of her face. So if I middle click and move out here, you can see how that is now aligned with that part. Now it looks like we may have gotten off a little bit on this lower part of her neck, but that's really easy to just fix those points. So it, you might find that it's easier to fix it in this view rather than in this four panel view rather than only looking in the perspective view because here I can see okay yeah obviously I need to move that down need to move this one down and then I can rotate around her here and say well this needs to go over a little bit maybe up maybe it has it was a little bit too high and then just kind of continue editing that to get it into place Okay, so that looks pretty good, pretty close. Um, this point we can maybe move up a little bit closer. Just getting that better in line with her body. Okay, so this looks pretty good. And because we place that under the hierarchy of the head, now when we want to rotate the head again, we'll be able to, and that will rotate with it and stay in place. So there's a couple other lines that I want to get. I want to get one right in here and right in here. So I'm going to start this line right here, and then in between lessons, you can go in and do the same. Maybe try to get one on this area here. So what you want to do, select your head, grab your rotation tool, make sure you're in model mode so you're not rotating any particular points, and then we'll just rotate until we get it kind of either over on this side or on this side. Either one will work. And then we'll just create a line along that part of her head using the cubic tool. Now this one's going to go really fast because it's not really got a lot of details. It's just kind of right along the edge there. And we can just move a few points and very quickly have that in place. Maybe move that one a little bit closer to those other points to get that curve a little bit more accurate. Okay, so we'll grab that spline. We'll move it into place under the hierarchy on the head. Zero that head back out. Then take a look at it in the perspective view. There we go. Looks like we have another line right there on her head. Now we're starting to get into some interesting territory with the placement of kind of those ending points. So you can really quickly and easily make sure that you have your spline selected and not a head point and start kind of putting those into a position that you feel like better matches up with where you'd like them to go kind of based on uh, where you drew those initial lines out for the profile. So this part can take a little bit of extra time kind of editing to get them closer in areas that you feel like maybe it needs it. But I love the way that this one is flowing. So we kind of get this really interesting line that makes this sort of flow along the side of her head. And then this one almost looks completely straight. But when we turn it a little bit later on, we'll get that great look. So the next one I want to do is going to be kind of right in here. And I really want to focus on maximizing the look of the curve of the jawline. So you can see an interesting thing about this one is that even though it's on this part of her head right here, because of the angle that we're at, we get this beautiful kind of sway. So I want to mimic that on the other side and we're going to do that in between lessons and then come back um, with these pieces also duplicated and rotated around to the other side of her head just like we did with the ear pieces and we'll come back in the next lesson and have this all fleshed out and ready to add sweeps so that we've got some in between lessons just getting the rest of those splines drawn out so you can see what this looks like but I found that if you are just rotating the splines, the splines around the head they don't match up symmetrically so I started using symmetry to get that looking a little bit better and a little bit more realistic so to show you really quickly how that works I did it for these first four and I'm just going to do it with these other two right here. So to use symmetry, you'll just want to come up here to where you see that array button, and then drop in a symmetry, 
then grab that from the top where it's going to place it and I'll just place it right on top of my other symmetry so I can kind of keep this stacking order going with that line then I'll just grab the spline that I want to create symmetry for on the other side and then I'll drop it beneath the symmetry and you'll see that a second line will be created right on the other side of that head then if you don't want to go in and create a brand new symmetry like I was just doing, you can simply select one of the ones you already have, then control drag up to duplicate it. Then you would just delete the spline and then grab the other spline and place it there. So it saves you a little bit of time to not have to click quite as many buttons by just duplicating it and replacing the spline. Now the reason why I'm not doing symmetry for these top two is because that is the front and back profiles and they don't really need symmetry. So okay now we've got all of our splines in place created by symmetry and now we're ready to start positioning this head. So couple of things I want to do here. We're not going to be actually viewing this head itself later on. We're only going to be using these splines and eventually some sweep nerves with them. So right now my head is almost acting like a null object to control those. So what I'm going to do is actually drop in another null object that will do that because you'll notice that if I want to turn off the visibility of this head it also turns off all those splines that are underneath it in its hierarchy. So um, let's go ahead and we will drop in right here a null object from under those primitives menu. Um, so we've placed that. It's going to be here at the top. And I'm just going to bring it down and put it right above the head. And we'll call this head control. And then all I have to do is select everything that's underneath that head in the hierarchy and then instead move it above the head into the head control. And then I can collapse it down and it's easier to work with. And then we can turn off the head itself and we'll only see those splines that we created. Pretty cool. Okay, so now with the head control selected and the move tool, we can start to position this. However, it is a little bit hard to tell what it is at this point since we haven't added our sweeps. So you can turn back on the visibility of the head if you want. You also want to make sure that you're not really moving by the head control, the head or the headphones. You want to be moving the head and the headphones control because we want the headphones to move along with everything that we've done. So before we move it, let's go ahead and see where we want to position it. So I'm going to look through my camera view and we're here kind of towards the end right in there. Let's go into frame 600 and kind of move this into place. Okay. So if I scrub backwards, we can't see our sweep. So let's go ahead and turn those back on. We had those off a few lessons ago. There we go. Okay, so now we're getting an idea for how big the head is in relation to the sweeps and how far away it is in relation to them as well. So it looks a little bit small. So I'm going to push it down and a little bit closer to us by using those X and, y and uh, Z handles. And I'll just scrub a bit to get right back into position. So we're kind of moving up here at the end. So it looks like we could probably move her up a little bit as well, maybe a little closer. Now I want to be careful that when I come through here, I don't go through her head. So it looks like I've still got enough leeway that that's not happening. I think it might look better if she's a little bit further back here because we do move over to the side a bit. And I think it also might be nice for her to be rotated a little bit to the left. So what we can do is maybe have her start out in this position and then kind of rotate more so we're looking at more of a profile view of her. So let's say that right about here, right before the camera starts to see her, come in here to the head and headphones and we'll set a keyframe making sure we're only moving position and rotation or only keying those properties so that's on frame 292 and then we'll scrub forward to let's just go all the way to the very end 
because sometimes it looks weird if someone stops moving in the middle of a really slow animation like that. And then we'll just rotate her head over a little bit like this, maybe up a little bit even in this axis. So she's kind of looking up here. And just I'm just kind of playing around with that until I get a spot that I'm happy with. Great. And I'm going to move her back just a little bit in that Z axis right there. Okay. And then let's go ahead and key that as well. Great. So the only problem is that we can still see her at this first frame. So she needs to be back a little bit further out of the way because I don't want to see her before that. Or we can key her visibility. So because those splines won't be coming on, you notice, we, you know, we've talked about we won't be able to see the gray part. We'll only be able to see the sweeping on the splines might not be an issue. So we can deal with that later on if you're if you feel happy with her position, you don't want to change it. So again, you're not going to see it right here. Then we'll kind of go past it as she's viewed right there. And then you start to see the headphones. She comes into view more just like this. Now, I think I actually might like to see a little bit more of those headphones. So I'm going to come in um, here and let's, let's take a, let's put in negative 10 right here. So I can deselect just by having maybe negative 30. Looks like we've got quite a selection here. I'm going to pump this up to like, let's do 2000. I'm just trying to get past the selection that we have here so I can click off of it. And then we'll fix that back to where it was, 0 to 600. And what I want to do is kind of just set a new keyframe here because I'm not really happy with not being able to see the headphones this early. So we can do a couple of things. We'll come in here and rotate her first a little bit more this way. Pull this forward a little bit more like that. We'll key it and then what we're going to do is scrub back to this frame just like that Then select that keyframe by highlighting it and then holding shift to snap it onto our current time indicator. So what's going to happen is if I zoom in on this, you'll see that that key was overwritten because it went on top of the old one. So now we're going to see those headphones a lot sooner. So if we want to do something where the headphones are kind of animating in, that's going to be visible. Also, she looks a little bit high up in the sky. So the head, so we see a lot of this part and not the headphones. So let's come in and edit that as well. Also, the keyframe's happening a little bit early. So now that that keyframe's been overwritten, we can just pull it back to happen a little bit sooner. There we go. And what we can do is if we just grab the head and headphones. We know it's the Y value that we're wanting to change. If we know we want to move her down a little bit, we can just pull that rekey and then we, when we come back over here, she's lower down. And you can do it some more with her in view. And that looks like 905. It's not going to key that because we didn't set it, but now we can come back over here, change this one to 900, let's say, rekey it, and then when we come over here, she's in a lot better place. Okay, now if by the end of this we want her to be moved up a little bit more, we can do that. Just move her up by the end of it. So she's going to be kind of slowly raising up over time. There we go. So that's looking really good. We're really starting to get the hang of what this looks like. We've got some really nice rotation. Great. Okay, so now that that is really coming together, um, let's start to talk about what these sweeps are going to look like. So um, 
it's really quite simple how the sweeps will be added. It's going to be very similar to what we've done here so far. So you can start experimenting with that. But if you want to watch me do it, we are going to do that in the next lesson. Or you can just skip on um, because we will, uh, in the lesson after this one, start importing some sweeps, or excuse me, some splines from Illustrator to make a kind of logo that's going to go along with this. So next lesson, we're going to still be working with sweeps just as we have been um, throughout the course to get this look on her head so you can continue following along or you can skip on to the next lesson where we've created so far, except that we do have to do a little bit of a trick because we've used a symmetry node to create some of our splines. So it's almost as if they don't really exist. So we'll get into that in a moment. But first, let's just come down here to where we have our head control null, where we're storing all of those splines. And we'll work with these first two splines that we have for the profile and for the back of the head, which really aren't any different, just to get us back into the sweep and splines mode. So I'm going to grab that sweep that we already have, and we'll control drag it down underneath the head control um, just to duplicate it. So we're just not creating a new sweep. It's already got a color. Um, just takes a little bit of the extra time out for you. But I am going to double click it and we'll rename this to Profile Sweep. And then let's go ahead and grab that spline here um, that is for mostly the profile. It's the front of her face. We'll open up our profile sweep and we want to replace spline 5 that was just one of our big sweeps that we had with that spline that's part of her face. So come in here, select spline 5, delete it, grab this spline and place it underneath your circle. And you want to make sure it looks like that in your hierarchy. So you've got circle, then spline. Now, if I scrub backwards a little bit, you can see that the settings we had for the one we cloned or just duplicated uh, basically makes it look like there's a worm or something crawling along her face. So we need to fix that. So select your profile sweep and it looks like we've got some keyframes on here, which makes sense because the other one was moving. But it looks like the first keyframe I don't really have access to. It goes somewhere before zero. And instead of trying to track it down by adding some frames, um, some negative frames before that zero frame, what I'm going to do instead is just right click on this little circle where we set keyframes, go to animation, and choose delete track. And that's just going to take all the keyframes for that property off of my timeline. We'll do the same thing for end growth. Right click, animation, delete track. Now it is going to leave those properties where they were whenever we deleted it, but it's easier to work with by doing that rather than hunting down that keyframe that might have the value you want, might not. So let's just take that down to zero. We'll take the end growth down to zero. And then let's go scrub back here and let's see when do we want this to start animating. Now I could say, you know, right here as we come around the corner, but I think it actually might be more impactful for that to start happening a little bit sooner so that line is already there a bit so let's come in and say maybe right about here just kind of as those pieces start to sort of turn down right around there 217 we'll control click our start growth so then that's keyed and we're going to come down through here and then let's say on about frame 500 is where we want her head to be totally grown out visible that's the last possible spot so I'll turn it up to 100 there and then we'll control click to key it. Now if I scrub backwards, you can see we get this nice line drawn along her face. But it's a little bit too thick down here, I think. So to make it a little more elegant, let's select our caps tab and come into our radius and turn that down a little bit. And then if you feel like that makes it too small up here, then you can select your circle and turn up that radius a little bit there. So just some quick little edits with what you've already got. It's going to make it go a little bit faster for you. Now, to get our practice in, let's just do this one more time with the profile sweep. Control drag down. This one let's call back head sweep because that's what this spline is right here. So we'll open up back head sweep. Grab the spline that's in there, delete it, and place this spline in its spot. And you can't see what it's doing because the head's in the way, but if I turn it off, you can see that's the back of the head spline. 
and it looks really cool that they kind of just come along at the same time. Now later I want to stagger it a little bit like what we have over here so some of these other pieces come down at different rates. But I like the front and the back coming along at the same time. I think that looks neat. So now we're going to get to a slightly more tricky part. So what we're doing now is um, we basically just want to move on to some of the next splines that we have. But all the rest of our splines have been used to create other splines on the other side of the head with this symmetry node. So because of that, we run into a little bit of a problem. So let's just see what does it look like if we try to replace a regular spline with a symmetry node. So we'll just keep doing what we've been doing, duplicating the, the sweep that's already above it. So I'll control drag that down. And we'll call this one, let's just call this one head sweep one because these are the ones that aren't the profile or the back so we'll just name all the rest of them one through however many there end up being. Um, so head sweep one we'll delete the spline that already exists because we know that's the same one that we used on the back of the head so delete that one out and then let's just see what happens if we try to use the symmetry in its place. Okay so kinda weird we've got this weird little dot on the end of it and then this side looks okay but if we scrub it it just kind of it looks like it comes on a little early and then this side kind of pops on it's all wrong so um, let's figure out what we need to do instead I could just grab this spline and put it underneath there but then I wouldn't have a spline to use on the other side so I'd kind of be back to where I was before I used the symmetry to create that other half so what I need to do is tell this symmetry node to create real geometry, to create a real spline for me that isn't just being created through this node. So the way that you're going to do that is to right click your symmetry and then come in here and choose current state to object. Now you might think, oh, I can just make it editable, but that's not going to give you exactly what you want. So choose current state to object. Okay, so now what this does is it gives you a null object and underneath it, it gives you a spline. Now let's take a look at this spline a little more closely. I want to turn off this head sweep for a second, so uncheck that, make it an X so we can actually see that spline, it's not inside of the green. And you can see, if we rotate around here especially, that this is basically got it's got both splines in it now so we've got and we've got a lot more points than the other one too now that's not going to make a difference overall but it will help us to kind of differentiate um, that the ones with more dots go on the side where we didn't originally draw them so that actually is kind of helpful um, so we've got this spline that we originally drew not quite as many dots and then we've got this spline that is basically a combination of the one that was created and the one that we originally drew it's just added more points so you might think oh well I can just use that new spline since it you has both of them for the sweep so let's see what happens if we do that if I grab that spline and I place it in the position that that spline would normally go in and I uncheck that uh, it looks a little crazy it doesn't like that and I think that part of the reason why it does it that way is because they're not actually connected up here and we're keying the end and beginning property um, or the start and end property and it's just a big crazy mess so what we're going to do instead is uncheck that and we're going to delete the points on one side. Now what side would you want to delete from? Well since we already have a spline that we use with the symmetry on this side we should probably delete the points on this side from this other multiple pointed spline. So we'll have a multiple pointed spline for this side and then the one that we created by hand on this side. Now they're not going to look any different once they are both being swept as long as we're using two different sweeps for both separate splines. So let's get this started. I'm going to come up here and grab my rectangle selection. Make sure you have the spline selected that has all these dots on it. And then on the right side or the side that only has the headphones we'll just kind of create a little rectangle selection around there and make sure you get all of them that are visible and hit 
backspace or delete to get rid of them. Okay, so now we've got this spline that's only on this side, and then we've got this other spline that's only on this side. Now right now it looks like it's on this side too because it's still under the symmetry. So let's take our multiple pointed spline and just place it above the head sweep so we can keep track of it. And then I'm going to take this spline and put it in the right place underneath my circle. And then I'm just going to shift select the symmetry and the symmetry null that was created and delete them. Now we'll turn back on our sweep and it looks like we've got a nice little sweep here for the spline that we drew. And if I scrub it, there it is. Now let's have the moment of truth to see if it works with this other multiple pointed spline. Now, I have to use a separate sweep node, but I can still use uh, the duplicate method that we've been doing. So I'll control drag down just like that. We'll call this one head sweep two, and I'll delete out the spline that's already there. And then we'll grab that spline that we put up there for safekeeping and pull it down into place underneath our circle. And now, if I drag this, looks like we're getting a perfect sweep all at the same time along all those points. So that is great. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Now my explanation of this process took a lot longer than it actually will for you to go in and kind of start recreating that process for the rest of these nodes. But let's go through one more kind of more quickly now that you are now that I explained it and you're getting it. Um, and also now that we've kind of fixed some of the um, properties for those sweeps. So we've got head sweep two that we'll be working from for our duplicate. So I'll control drag down. We'll call this one head sweep three. We'll grab our symmetry, right click, current state to object. Now we have that spline that's got all those dots in it. We've also got our spline two that's our original. So let's go ahead and we'll come into head sweep three, delete the spline that was there left over from the duplicate. We'll put, go ahead and put spline two in its place. Then we'll grab head sweep three, control drag it down. Um, if this happens where it comes under it in the hierarchy, you can just undo it, collapse it up, then control drag down and it should go not in the hierarchy underneath it, but at the same level as it is just it will be underneath it in the stacking order um, then you can just rename this one to four now we'll come in and you can take spline five we'll kind of uh, rotate around here or excuse me you want to come in and grab this one the one that has lots and lots of dots and it looks like It looks like it's only on that one side, but unfortunately, if I turn off that uh, head symmetry here, it's going to be visible underneath all of that because we uh, do we put it underneath it. So what you need to do is make sure that you get your spline two and your rectangle selection, and you come over here and you delete off any extra points that you may have had from it. Okay, so just come in there, make sure you get them all. It looks like I maybe missed one. There we go. So they were still there. They were just inside of that other sweep. One more, it looks like. Just make sure you got them all. And if you're having trouble getting them all, you may need to turn off some of your other things that you have in there. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that null, delete the null, and delete my symmetry since we already made it editable. Maybe even zoom out a little bit might help me. Looks like I've just still got a few points in there. Okay, now they're all gone. So now what I can do is our head sweep four is what we're replacing uh, now. So we've got one or two were the ones that we created uh, together. Then three was the one that we just started. And then four was another duplicate of that. So we'll grab spline two, delete it, and then place that spline dot two in its place. Turn it back on. And now you'll have all of those working together. So you can see we've got those two little multiple dotted sweeps there. So that's going to be under head sweep two 
and four. So it looks like the way it'll work out is all the ones that have a head sweep and then an even number will be the ones with multiple dots. So that also might help you to kind of differentiate them. So I want you to go through and repeat this process for the rest of the sweep. So you have four more symmetries to deal with for separating them out and getting those splines so that you have your original spline and your multiple dotted spline that's kind of pulled out of that symmetry. So take care of that in between lessons. I'm going to do the same. Then we'll come back in the next lesson and we're going to work on creating an animation for the headphone and also offsetting the animations of these sweeps so they're not all happening at exactly the same time.